the main goal of this talk is, about, is talking uh, about how to make uh, a dashboard uh, on Odoo using OCA tools. I mean, uh, I would like to make a small introduction to, to BI because uh, K KPI, it's uh, really, um, well, it cannot be understood without BI. Uh, so we need to know how, how important it is and how to manage it. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to present myself. Uh, I am currently a project manager on, on Cabo Blanca, a hospital in Spain, uh, a set of hospitals. Uh, I have been implementing Kodu uh, on the last three years, uh, and I'm, I have worked uh, in some OCA repositories, and I'm also a PSC on some, some of them. But uh, before I was uh, an Odoo implementer, I worked uh, as a B, uh, business analyst and consultant uh, specialized in BI. That's why uh, I tried to make uh, a tool that tries to solve some of the issues I found on, on Odoo. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that we, we must uh, understand that uh, not everything can be used in order to, to share with the user. I mean, we have data. Data is our database, for example. Uh, it has a lot of, 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 the, uh, of rows and it's nearly impossible to know anything on data. We need to transform the, this data in information. When we have information, we can understand something. We can create a uh, split information. We can try to know something. And at the end, when we join the dots, when we understand everything, we have some knowledge. Enrique, sorry to interrupt. Maybe you, you should put your slides full screen. Uh, oh, OK. So, OK, let me do something. Let's try. That's going to be F11. Yeah, great. Oh, OK, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> OK. Uh, so uh, when we connect the dots, we, have, um, we can create some knowledge. And that's really useful for, for the users. Uh, that data is important in order to work. Also information, but knowledge allows the user to make decisions. So at uh, the end, this is the pyramid. At the bottom, we have data. Then we have some information that it's usually represented by KPIs. Usually, it can be a number, um, a small um, Um, a small comparison between two numbers, something like that. And at the end, we have the knowledge. The knowledge, uh, impl it's implemented usually in dashboards. Dashboards can be a lot of things, but we can understand them as a set of KPIs integrated that allows us to make decisions. Uh, the problem with BI is that on my experience, there are two kinds of users. For on one side, we have the deep diving users, users that want to know everything, that they don't care if the data is in a raw model. So they dive on data. They usually use uh, cubes or excels or something like that. On the other side, we have the superficial users, users that they don't want to navigate too much. They simply want a small dashboard with all the information, and they will take some decisions there. However, uh, users are not, uh, on, are not always here or here. They can change. Also, uh, some even at the same time, I mean, maybe you just start like a superficial user. Uh, you see that there is an issue then you start diving. So we must try to solve uh, the problem of BI for both users. Uh, so what's the most important thing on BI? That there's no holy grail. 
What do you mean? There's not an universal recipe. Each customer, each user has unique needs. Uh, that's my experience. Even on projects that are uh, in companies that they are, they are really similar, that everything is different. I mean, maybe it's uh, some of them try to make all their decisions using some specific KPIs, others use other kinds that are not even related. Sometimes uh, they don't want to use some kind of views. I mean, uh, I once I had a customer that never, they, they, they didn't want to see any pies because they didn't understand that. So we don't want any pies on our BI. So uh, it, might be, it, it might be simple if everyone had the same needs, but it isn't. And BI at the end is it's too much related to user. I mean, they want to do it in a single way, everyone, and it cannot be um, shared the same way for all our projects. So uh, I like to, to introduce this different uh, ways that uh, we can have some knowledge using Godo. From, from our data. Uh, the standard proposal is the pivot tables. Pivot. Um, they are great for analyzing. It's really easy to navigate them, but on my side, it's hard to, to see trending, to see trends. I mean, it's hard to say, uh, how is this year against later, last, last year? Um, and also uh, pivot tables, as they are defined, have an issue. It's you cannot cross information in the same view. You have to use two, two tables on dashboards. So it's not easy. Uh, on the other side, OCA has proposed several, several modules. One is the KPI module. Uh, it's good for aggregated values. It allows to integrate with sites outside of Google, but it's only one value. No graphs, no navigation. On the other side, there's the Miss Builder. Uh, I think it's a great tool. We use it. It's, I think it's great. Um, allows you to do a lot of things. However, eh, at the end, it is still a table. It's hard to uh, read or cross information, but it's great. And here's what I'm trying to introduce is the KPA dashboard. Uh, this module, uh, it's not, it does not allow us to create a great uh, navigation. That's for sure. It allows to, to aggregate values uh, integrated between all our sites. It, we can graph there and it even uh, refresh on the fly what do you mean it's it can detect changes and they will be shown um as you uh, uh if you have the screen open i mean if you are seeing uh, the total sale orders that are being created today if someone creates one you will see it maybe not at the same time but maybe like in 20 seconds 30 seconds but you don't need to refresh the page every time. It has not a real navigation, but we can create uh, links to other sites, like pivot table, and it allows to make small changes. I mean, for example, uh, we have a small dashboard that uh, we try to see uh, how many patients came today. But uh, using the small buttons, uh, we can see today, yesterday, until one week ago. That's what we usually check. So, well, I will try to make a small example in life using the, the current modules. Oh, 
Okay. So when we try to configure a KPI using these tools, uh, we have two things. One is the dashboard and the other one is the KPI. Why do we, not, do, do we need to define KPIs? Because we want a single truth. Uh, one of the usual problems when we use uh, Excel, for example, is that users might uh, create their own truth. So we are not sure which is the real number for something. Let, uh, let's make an example. So we decide to create a KPI that's like peers for the for our contributors okay, and the OCA. Um, this KPI can be computed automatically, so it's uh, it's sure that it's integrated and everyone has the same value. Or we could use uh, someone that creates an Excel takes all the peers and then all the contributors and make the division. But if some, if it is done by two people, the value might be different because, uh, well, timings, uh, he decided to remove or he forgot something. So we need to define KPIs uh, in a unified way that must be uh, equal for everyone. One of the biggest problems I saw is that uh, using Excel for BI might create uh, differences, even problems, because you are following or trying to improve some KPIs, but it is not known by everyone. So you need to make them visible for them, for all. So let's create a small KPI like number of sale orders I hope okay At the end of the screen, uh, on, at the end of the presentation, there's how to make the different configurations of numbers or KPIs. Don't worry. So, okay, something is wrong. I forgot to do self. Sorry. So now we have two thousand uh, sale orders. Okay. But we could make some uh, filtering here, like on one day. So here it's when I'm using some improvements I found there, something like that. Sorry. It's something that seems big. It's not too much, but doing it on memory it will be hard. <laughs> so I try to reuse the code. So what we are doing here? We are taking the sale orders on some period. In this case, on one day. Uh, using the, the confirmation date. It's nothing too hard. And it will use a context value called days in order to, to know how many days. The problem with this function is that it must be computed on fly. What it means on fly? It means that it must be computed every time we need to sh show this value because it depends on some context. So we add this and now it should work. I prefer such count less less aggressive.
audio. Okay. So today there's 10. Like, and it has an increase of uh, 2033%. It's a lot. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's try to make a small dashboard. So when we create a dashboard uh, on this system, uh, it tries to implement several kinds of um, of KPIs, of elements. They will be stored on a grid, something similar to this. We can decide if they, if they are more, are bigger, smaller, something like that, but that's the main goal. So. We decide the color. And now we can see it. Okay, it's fine. It works. Now we could do something better like graphs, changing the KPI in order to make it, I don't know, a, a meter. A meter. Let's see what happens with the meter here. Okay, it tries to make it 100. It's only 10. I prefer to stick on the other one. Maybe it's better. And now we could try to make some navigation. For example, we will add today size okay. now what we would like to do is when we select today it shows today's value when we select yesterday it shows yesterday value how do we make it? Well, the first thing is we need to enter on the book mode. Why the book? Because um, users uh, likes to, to use BI and they want to feel that they can make some addition or changes. But on my experience, uh, BI, it's, uh, it's good for a tool to be used, but it's hard to configure. I mean, uh, every time I saw a project where users tried to make the, their own BI tool, it was always a problem. Why? Because um, it's always there's always there a technical interface that you need to edit or make changes, and they are not uh, properly prepared. Um, they don't always know how to make something and they try to solve it uh, in the hard way when when a programmer or, or an analyst has more information and can try to make something smoother so uh, at the end using the bi tool it it should be for everyone creating dashboards it's not my recommendation, but not this tool, every tool. So now this will modify the context and set days it's zero. And this is with set days it's one. So now we have some changes, but here's the interesting part. Uh, we can make this.
we can create a new invoice a new sale order and uh, no right now it's not will not be refreshed because we need to set like every 20 seconds it will be refreshed so So now it's taking all the information, it's being refreshed. Why this is interesting? Because sometimes some departments might want to know at uh, might need some screen showing their issues, something like that. And this tries to solve this issue. For example, I can make a real example here. This is one of our dashboard views. Here we are showing how many issues there's open on the IT department, how much are new, so someone has to read it, how many have been postponed because they are not being do, they are not being solved right now because it's not important or it, it might be an issue that can be solved now. How many are preventive? I mean, some we are using um, maintenance for, for IT, for the IT department. At the end, it's, they are using machines. So uh, some servers or some, some machines might create a preventive issue. So how many comes from a preventive? And here we are seeing every member of our team, how many issues are open for him, for them. For example, me. I have one issue open. Uh, and why is this interesting? Because we can have it in uh, um, some places that will be show if there's something that can be a problem. For example, it's interesting, we can see here the, the, the maintenance requests, but we could add also how many QIBI jobs are being um, are waiting to be to be processed. Why or how many are in an error state? Why? Because you don't want them to change their view. You want them to have this always opened and check it when it's needed. So We could do uh, more changes like adding a uh, prefix, suffix, making a graph. Making a graph is always uh, not, not really comfortable, but we can do it. Uh, so right now, uh, this tool has um, these uh, ways to show information. The counting or counter, it's a number and its growth, it's useful to know, for example, how many patients entered today, uh, how much money did I make on the last month, something like that, on my profit. Uh, some comparison, uh, it allows to make a small um, compa uh, a, a comparison using Altair, it's a, a library uh, on Python, it's, it's good. Uh, small graphs and also uh, some accomplishments using uh, the, the gauge or methods or however you like to, to call them. Uh, it's it's on like your car and showing how how much uh, fuel it, it's left. It's good for showing uh, like growth and and that kind of things or your market share. So that's, that tries to solve also, uh, this presentation tries to solve uh, some uh, missing documentation in this, that in this uh, module, because uh, not much people knows how to define things. 
I mean, here's for example how you create a, a KPI. So when I made uh, the value, I created this, I made the value, but I could do the previous one. So when I did this, I defined the value and its previous value that it was one week ago, but we could make it months, years, or something like that. Uh, well, uh, the meter, that's uh, the, it's like a good meter, it's called it in several ways. The graph, uh, it can have several graphs in the same, and that's only for the, uh, for this one. Uh, the LSAO is not documented here because it's a separate module. Uh, it, it could be implemented something here, but it's not right now. And that's what I made. I, that, I added uh, a context value that is modified when you need it. Uh, why could we use this context? For example, we could create a diamond for our, all our customers. So. We can create a button on the customer that will show will show how they are doing. So we can cross their sales, their purchases, um, everything we could need from them. Uh, so how do we do that? Sending the con inside the context the the partner ID so we can filter. Also, it could be interesting on products or something like that. But, as I said, this must be done for each uh, uh, customer. Not every company will try to compare their partners on the same way. Because I might be interested in checking how they sell. Uh, other ones want to see their purchases. So, uh, it, it cannot be implemented in a standard way. We can make a demo, we can make a small uh, a small example, but at the end, everyone needs to make their own. And here's how we define the dashboard. Uh, I didn't ex uh, explain this, but it's interesting. It allows us to make uh, a menu. So, for example, in my demo dashboard, I can generate a menu on that depends on settings. Now, inside settings, I need probably need to refresh in order to to show the menu. I have the dashboard, uh, my demo dashboard. So uh, users don't need to see the configuration. You usually present only the dashboard. Some extra configuration that's usually related to pixel perfect. <laughs> and here's the the dashboard, the KPIs. Um, well, it's some strange things that I need to come to create. It's, at the end, it's interesting, but I think it's not the main goal of this talk. <laughs> and here are some examples created using this tool. So that's how it's said. And the user could select today, yesterday, uh, and so on, and until seven days, in order to check how many orders were made. Why do you we use that in order to to see if there's some extra um, work on some areas? So in our case, it's done by centers, but that's an idea. Uh, so what's the how we will continue with this uh, tool? Probably uh, we need to solve some issues that are still there. Uh, because because uh, the tool is great, but uh, I think that not much people is using. So um, 
it's probably there's some issues there. Um, I would like to create uh, some kind of filters like uh, modifying the panel, something like that on, on there. And that allows us to improve uh, how we compute and allows to create a filtering like, I want to see this partner or this product, how it's going, or this category. And that's something I would like to do. Uh, it's hard, uh, I don't know if I, I have much time for that, but I will try some. So also we can create new widgets. Um, the tool is extensible. Uh, it's not too hard to create a new a new widget uh, that's for pies or for other kinds of graphs that might be interesting. And also improving the documentation. At the end, part of this presentation will be used there. I probably will attach the document there because uh, it's hard to, man to know how to use this tool. And now I think it's if you need, you have any issues, uh, questions, uh, if you want to make something specifically, I want I don't know trying to make something with the, the large word at the end. I'm open to, to to make a small demo using here or something like that. Thank you very much, Henrik. A very interesting presentation. It uh, gave me. Uh, I, want, uh, I would like to, to use that module uh, after the, the, your presentation, so very inspiring, thank you. Um, we have a question, uh, is this module available only for Odoo 12 or is it available for other versions? Um, it's only for 12 right now because I didn't mi mi migrate it. Uh, it's probably not an issue to migrate it to 12, I uh, to 13 even to 11, uh, we can try to make it, it's, it will not be hard. Mm. Should be easy to migrate. Yeah, okay. it's, it has not much dependencies, so. Okay, there is another question is, um, how would you compare this KPI dashboard uh, implemented in Odoo compared to another front end like React? Um, uh, well, the problem I see uh, it's if we want to do an implementation using other systems, uh, we could we could try to make uh, our, a React system that interacts directly to Odoo. I think it's not the best solution, but it can be done, and that's well, that's a way. Uh, the other option is to use like a, a, a standard BI tool. Like, I don't know, click view, uh, Jasper, or something like that. Uh, the problem using that kind of tools is that you usually need to make some ETL. And that means that the data will not be accessible directly. I mean, when you change something, it will not be, you will not view it immediately on your BI tool. That's why I made it inside Odoo using Odoo framework in order to be sure that there was no changes. Uh, but I mean, React me it might be better for for other kind of things. But uh, well, it's it's an option if they want to use that. So that's all, the only thing I can say about this. <laughs> okay. There is a question from Boon In who was late joining the presentation. Can you remind which uh, modules uh, are implementing this? Or provide the links again to. Yes, yeah, um, in OCA reporting engine, it's a KPA dashboard. I can create, I can attach them. Let me try to show you. It's here. 
it's on 12, but it can be migrated easily to 13, even 11. Uh, I need to check on 14 as they are make some changes on JavaScript. Yes, but we can try to make the migration too. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions with attendees? I don't see questions on Discord either, so... Yeah, I think all questions have been answered. So, thank you very much, Henrik, um, uh, for presenting this talk. Um, the next talk in this track is going to be in a bit less than one hour and it's going to be the um, ask me anything about logistics with uh, Joel. So we are going to, to pause this presentation now and start again in around three C central time. See you soon.